Hi right, guys, welcome to your first uh, lesson on media representations. We're going to be focusing a lot on codes and conventions today. All right, first thing that I need you to do is make sure that you've downloaded uh, the media representations booklet from your resources under Unit 1, Area Study 1. Uh, the first activity that we're going to start with is re-emphasizing what we learned in orientation lesson last year and what you should have done for your holiday homework. So in partners or individually, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, I want you to brainstorm what you already know about representations in the media all right, and write them on the page supplied in the booklet. All right, pause the video now, give yourself about five minutes to do this. Outcome one is focused on media representations. All right, so on completion of this unit, the students should be able to explain how media representations in a range of media products and forms and from different periods of time, locations, contexts, are constructed, distributed, engaged with, consumed, and read by the audience. All right, you're going to be expected to do some work at home every week to help you understand this easier. All right, I'm either going to set you activities from the books so and make sure that you have your textbook, or I will be coming up with some questions for you to answer. These will be uh, part of your outcome tasks. All right, so make sure that you do any homework that you were given. Representations are words, images, sounds, or stories that stand for something else, such as ideas, people, groups, places, emotions, or things. All right? A representation or construction of real life, pretty much. All, right? All representations are constructed with a particular purpose in mind. All right? Consider a nature documentary about lions in Africa. There have been many documentaries made about their lives. However, the manner in which the author wants to to construct the representation depends on how the audience will view them. Right? So, for instance, by making a continual use of lions attacking other animals, or even humans, the filmmaker can focus on the idea that, of lions being ferocious killing machines. Right? But on the other hand, they may create a documentary that contains images of the lions bonding together as a family and protecting their young, even being hunted by humans. Depending on which documentary is being watched, the audience will receive different messages about the lines. Both are representations of the lines, however. The difference between the two um, is the purpose of the filmmaker. In every representation, background and intention of the audience, ah, uh, sorry, author, can influence the reading of the media product. However, the audience will bring their own background, understanding and knowledge of the product being read which can in turn create a new understanding. For instance, you may have experienced uh, the horror of lions close up and it could influence your appreciation and reading of the media product. What is important, however, is the attempt by the author to position you to think and feel a particular way. Uh, this is very important to remember. So representations are constructed from the subject, the opinion and values of people who create the representation, the purpose, the opinions and values of the audience, and uh, the re reaction of the audience, and then the context of, of the society. Right? Representations are a form of shared language or understanding or discourse between the media and the audience. So because it is not possible to depict the world in its complex entirety, the media represent, uh, represents through a process of selection, all right, omission, and construction. Okay, so uh, it's impossible to include everything that reality has to offer. All right, so what is left out is referred to as omission, and what is left in is the selection. For instance, if you were representing a school in one shot, it would be impossible to include the whole school in that image. Choices need to be made and information uh, to be included needs to be selected. There are certain things that could assist in immediately identifying it as a school. All right, so the information would, um, included would depend on how the author wanted to portray, uh, portray the school. All, right. All media texts are constructed. As they're being constructed, important decisions are made about how the subject uh, will be represented. Right? 
When it comes to photography, for instance, there are a number of important decisions about how the subjects will be represented. Uh, this includes lighting, camera angle, shot size, visual composition, color, even the posture and facial expressions of the subject. All right. Think about all of the Instagram models that are out there. They post one photo, but they would have taken hundreds before they came down to that one photo, right? Because they kept on making decisions about what they wanted to keep in, so select, and when they wanted to keep it up or omission, all right? So, all of these decisions influence the way people uh, will read the photograph. Although this is a simple example, all media texts go through this process of construction. As a result, media texts often reflect the views and values of those who create them and the society in which they were created. All right, these are known as ideologies. Remember that word because it is a big part of the Year 12 um, curriculum and you will be hearing me talk about it when I talk to the Year 12s this year. So some of you will remember this from our um, orientation from last year, all right? It's Rene Magritte's um, it's Realism Painter from the 20th century. It's the famous pipe image, all right? He said, if I'd written on my picture, this is a pipe, I would have been lying. The reason why he's saying this is, it's his representation of the pipe, all right? So when translated into English, it means this is not a pipe, all right? So what is it if it's not a pipe? It's his representation, it's how he sees this pipe, all right? This is how he wants audience to see the pipe. It's not actually a pipe. I cannot go out and grab that pipe with my hands, all right? It is a picture of a pipe, therefore it's representation of that pipe. All right, so the media attempts to create a believable version of reality. If it is not believable, you wouldn't accept it. The media relies on what um, has been termed your willing suspension of disbelief. Uh, this is, you know it's a film or television show, but you go along with the illusion. Think of any uh, reality TV show that you've ever watched. All right? There's always a bad guy or the villain. We know now that it is up to the uh, producers to choose who they want to be the villain, and they work at it and work at it. But we still hate that person. Right? We don't know them. We don't know if they're actually a good person. Right? But the producers have made us believe, right? and they are portraying this person as an evil person. Right? They are bad. We don't like them. Right? It might uh, seem obvious, right? but it's important to know that the creation and construction of reality happens equally in non-fiction texts such as news and documentaries. Right? What I want you to do tonight, little test. Go home, turn on a current affair, watch one of the stories, and then go to ABC, watch the same story and see the difference how they portray both stories. Right, you'll see completely different perspectives. All right, this is a construction of reality happening in the news. All right, it happens in magazines as well. So, US President Barack Obama examines damage on the beach in the wake of the Gulf of Mexico oil spill in 2010. All right, the original um, just looks like he's staring at his feet, all right, looking at some rubbish, while on the front cover of the magazine, it looks like he is upset, all right. He looks really upset about this oil spill. He looks depressed because we cannot see the other people around him. We can't see the rubbish that he's looking at, all right. It's just him, an oil rig, and the ocean. All right? They are portraying that reality to their customers. All right. Now take this photo, for instance. Okay. If we look at this photo here, all right, we can see the whole story. All right? We can see what's happening. If we were to cut the, this guy off, all right, and just look at this image now, all right? It looks like the uh, prisoner is in trouble. It looks like they've got a gun pointed at him. It looks like the US military is abusing a prisoner of war. But if we were to cut off this side and just look over here, it looks like the US military is helping a prisoner of war. They are the good guys. All right? Same image, completely different stories again. 
Now, it depends on what part of the reality you are seeing. So, now we're going to look at some codes and conventions. All right? So, the codes and conventions that are used to construct media pr products and meaning in different media forms. All right? This is straight from the curriculum booklet. So, understanding codes and conventions is really important. All right? We've been doing that for the last couple of lessons with the year 12s. So you should have a good grip on what they are, all right? It's not a great deal of difference between the codes and conventions. Generally, code is a rule, whereas convention is usually an established practice, all right? Codes and conventions are the structural and story elements that help an audience interpret a media narrative. In VC media, codes can be seen as technical elements such as lighting, sound, and camera, all right? So we know that it's camels. Conventions can be seen as the elements that create and shape the story and plot, such as character motivation and cause and effect links. All right, some Miss Corpse. Simply put, codes can be seen and heard, while conventions have to be inferred or created by the audience. All right, this is very important to remember. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, all right, we're going to be watching a clip from a film in a sec. These are just some examples of uh, how codes are used, all right? So camera techniques, low angle camera, high angle camera. The effect, all right? Low angle is character looks powerful. High angle, character appears vulnerable. We've edited in, fade to black, time has passed. Cut to cut back, there's simultaneous action. All right, sound, so if the music's building, we, um, it creates tension or suspense for the audience. With the conventions, all right, cause and effect, all right, the effect um, it helps audience understand character motivation and decisions and drives the story. Setting, location, historical or time period in which the story takes place and the duration of or uh, time frame of the story and structure helps the audience understand the order things will occur. All right, so an example of that is television news broadcast starts with a major story. They'll follow that by some national news, then some state news, usually the sport and then weather, and finish it off with a good news story. All right. Or if we're looking at a um, film narrative, then it's got a beginning, middle, and end. All right. So in your uh, representation booklet, all right, there's a table. What I want you to do is I want you to come up with at least three codes and at least three conventions, and write the effects and meaning or meanings of it after watching Rob Rayner's uh, 1990 Misery clip. saving your life and nursing you back to hell. Oh, Paul, you're going to make me the envy of the whole world. You just expect me to rip something off, is that it? 
I expect nothing less than your masterpiece. You do understand that this is not the ordinary way in which books get written. I mean, some people might actually consider this an oddball situation. I have total confidence in your brilliance. Besides, the view will inspire you. You just inhale that. I'll be right back. I guess you don't get bothered by neighbors much. Don't you worry about that. You'll have total solitude so you can concentrate on your work. Great. I got you this expensive paper to type on. And I got a great deal on this 50-pound clunker on account of it's missing an N. I told the sales lady N was one of the letters in my favorite writer's name. It's, it's two of the letters in my favorite nurse's name, Annie. You fooler. Did I do good? You did great. <laughs> there is just one little thing. Um, I can't work on this paper. See, it's grass full bond. It, it smudges. So I thought maybe if you went back into town, you could bring me some white long grain Vimeo. But mine cost the most. So I don't see how it can smudge. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, it does smudge after all. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> I thought you'd be interested. I'd, I'd like for you to be in on everything, Annie, not just the finished book, but how it's written. Thank you for thinking of me. Anything else I can get while I'm in town? Any other crucial requirements that need satisfying? Would you like a tiny tape recorder? Or how about a handmade set of writing slippers? Well, just the uh, paper will be fine. Are you sure? Because if you want, I'll bring back the whole store for you. Annie, what, what's the matter? What's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. I go out of my way for you. I do everything to try and make you happy. I feed you, I clean you, I dress you, and what thanks do I get? Oh, you got the wrong paper, Annie. I can't write on this paper, Annie. Well, I'll get your stupid paper, but you just better start showing me a little more appreciation around here, Mr. Man. <laughs> written about this not the worst.
what I want you to do, uh, in that table provided in the booklet, um, I'll give you a, a couple of clues. Right? Watch it again. Look at the camera angles that they're using. Right? Look at the sort of sound that is being used and what sort of editing is being used. Right? Tip for that is um, we see Paul moving around the house and we see Annie leaving at the same time. All right? So that's your tip for that. Conventions, I want you to look at the setting, all right, the cause and effect, and whose point of view are we looking in? Right? In the second column, in the effect or meaning column, I want you to write it at least two sentences for each. All right? Use the example in the previous slides all right, to help you out. All right, so watch it as many times as you need. All right? Do it the best that you can. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. All right. The terminology that we've gone through, which I want you to start putting in the back of your book or somewhere so you have a glossary of terms right, to help you remember, are uh, codes and conventions. All right. So the codes are technical, written, or symbolic codes used by the author to create representations. Conventions, um, when media codes are used in ways that help an audience understand a representation. All right. Then we have representations themselves, so the ways in which the media portrays particular groups, communities, um, experiences, ideas, or topics uh, from a particular ideological or value perspective. Then we have selection, so what was chosen to be included, omission, what was chosen to be excluded, and then construction, so the making of that representation and the media product. Alright, so the activities that you need to make sure that you have done by the end of this lesson and ready for our Friday lesson are the brainstorm at the start of the lesson, okay, so either individually or with a partner, and then you need to make sure that you do the codes and conventions in film um, table, alright, and that's what you need to do. If you don't get that finished, that's what's for homework.